Hi, my name is Lin, and welcome to my talk on zero-shot semantic cementation for robots in agriculture. In agricultural fields, we control weeds using blanket applications of herbicides. However, this is inefficient as well as unsustainable, potentially causing water pollution or herbicide-resistant weed infestations. Instead, we would like to move towards automated precision weeding with robotics. With precision weeding robots, we can target specific plants and leverage non-chemical methods including laser weeding shown here. To enable this, we must first be able to automatically distinguish between weed plants and crop plants in the field. We do this with a task called crop weed semantic cementation, where we are given as input an RGB image, and we are tasked to assign every pixel in this image as either a crop, a weed, or a background pixel. Here, we demark crops as green and weeds as purple. Still, the art methods for crop weed semantic cementations are fully supervised, that means that we require labels to train a network. However, this also means that every time we would like to deploy a new domain, we have to label new data. For example, here if we would like to perform crop weed semantic cementation on UAV data for sugar beet field, we first have to label UAV data for sugar beet field. If we then change, say, our robot from a UAV to a UGV, we have to again label new data for this new UGV. And this is especially the case when we enter a new field with a new crop species, say moving from sugar beets to maize. Here we have to again label more data for the maize data. Having to label so many data continuously is not cost effective. Labeling is currently the bottleneck for most fully supervised networks. Therefore, we would like to move away from fully supervised methods and instead propose our method, weeds are weird, that requires no labels as a zero shot approach instead. Our approach requires no labeling because we instead leverage a heuristic that is common in agricultural fields. Specifically, we know that crop plants belong to the same species in monoculture fields, meaning that they will look similar to each other. Also, crop plants are intentionally sown in the field and therefore, there are a lot of crops in the crop field. In contrast, weed plants belong to a myriad of species and therefore, they mostly look different from each other. Since they are also not intentionally sown in the field, they exist in smaller numbers per species. Take for example here this row of plants. We see that most plants in this row look similar to each other, and these are the crop plants, except for the wheat plant in the center here that belongs to a different species. Note that we are able to distinguish between the crops from weeds even though they all exist within the crop row. So now let's take a look at how our approach works in more detail. As we are performing crop weed segmentation, and we mentioned it earlier, we take in as input an RGB image, and we output the prediction of a crop weed semantic segmentation. The first step of our approach is to separate the soil from the vegetation. Specifically, we would like to segment out the vegetation segments in the image. And we do this by leveraging the foundation model SAM, or Segment Anything Model, that performs interactive instance segmentation. So SAM takes in as input a pixel prompt as well as an RGB image, and outputs then the instance that lies on this pixel prompt. So how do we use this then for our vegetation segments? Well, we simply have to place pixel prompts on the vegetation segment and be careful to not place any pixel prompts on non-vegetations or on the soil. And we do this largely by leveraging the idea that plants are green. From all these pixel prompts, we feed it into SAM to obtain the SAM segments. So once we have the SAM segments, we then map it into the feature space of BioClip. So what is BioClip? BioClip is another foundation mission model that we use. It is trained specifically for biodiversity classification. And for our use case, we are only interested in the VIT image encoder of the BioClip to map our images into the feature space of BioClip. In the BioClip feature space, we can compare the vegetation segments, since features from the same species should be close together and features from different species are further away. So we, from the vegetation segments from SAM, we map them into the, each of the segments into the feature space of BioClip. So now we have all the BioClip features. We have to then distinguish the crop features from the weed features in this BioClip space. Here we apply the heuristic that we presented before, where we know that crops are similar and the common features, and weeds comprise a large range of species and fewer in each individual species. In order to apply our heuristic, we have to prepare our data first in an offline manner. And so, this offline module takes in as input a set of RGB images. Note here we are only using images and no labels are used here. We then apply the same method as before to get vegetation segments and map into the BioClip feature space same as before. And now we have all of these BioClip features. 
So now let's take a look at how we can select crop features from all the other features using this toy example. Pretend these icons represent clip features. We first select from these a few candidate features randomly. For each of these candidate features, we then compare it to all the remaining features to calculate a similarity score, where similar features will have a higher score, and we do this for every feature, as well as for every candidate. Then we choose the candidate with the highest score, and this is then selected as our crop feature. We return all unchosen features into the bag, and we repeat this process from the beginning. Once we have enough crop features, we can then model the boundary of our crops in the BioClip feature space. We do this by building hyperspheres centered around each selected crop feature. During inference, features that lie within these hyperspheres are predicted as crops, and features that lie outside the hyperspheres are predicted as weeds. We use this method to obtain the final semantic segmentation for each vegetation pixel. We then obtain our crop weed semantic segmentation, and as shown here, our prediction actually matches the down truth quite well. Here are more results for our method. We show that we are able to distinguish between crop plants and weed plants correctly. We also show that our method works on different domains, including the UGV domain as well as for corn and not only sugar beet. Note that here we have done all this without using any labels, and our approach works the same for all different domains. This means that we are able to eliminate the need for labeling new data every time we move to a new domain. We, here are some quantitative results. We have done more experiments in our paper, so please check it out in more detail. Thank you.